Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus, and I'm going to update you on this polar vortex coming down. Matter of fact, we have some Arctic air that will be coming down, and I'll show you how far it's going to go. Plus, I have some weather news updates for you, and we have this system coming in for the next couple of days. It is going to bring some rain towards Washington, towards Oregon. Then it's going to start our severe weather in the south, and that has grown as well. Also, that system that's coming off the northeast, it is really ramping up and actually gets a little bit of a closed low as it swings by. Don't last too long, gets tore up, but it tries to actually get a closed low and strengthen up. Only if it was a little bit warmer. But make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. That way you get all the latest updates that I give out. Plus, we have our winner for today, and we have another giveaway for tomorrow. And the storm system off the West Coast is not the only system. We do have our next one coming. I will give you those updates as well. But first, let's do the update real quick on this cold air coming still around the 17th or 18th. And we still have the one from the 10th through the 12th that will be passing through. This will be polar air. This will be Arctic air. And you can see this when you look at all North America. So you have all these little fingers that come out and all this blue would be cold polar air coming in. And this is your Arctic air when you get to the pink. So when we go from the 10th all the way through the 12th, we get some cold air coming down all the way to the South Central. And it does switch over towards the Southeast as well and go up towards the Northeast. But once we keep going and see what's going on around the 18th, you can see that we actually get some of this very cold Arctic air that actually spills into the Northern half of the US while you get the polar temperatures down in the South and the Southeast. And it keeps coming down, this is the 16th. It comes all the way down until the 18th and it bursts up over the upper Midwest, Ohio Valley and the Northeast. It don't go real far to the South. Now, the previous one did show it went all the way down to the south. That's why I wanted to wait for this update for today, because now it's showing maybe you might get a little bit of some cold polar temperatures. You're not getting Arctic air in the south. This will be for the upper Midwest as you go from the 15th through the Ohio Valley as you go through the 16th and 17th and go out through the northeast for the 18th. Maybe even hang around until the 19th for the northeast. And that is what we're going to have before our next warm up. And not talking about the systems just yet, let's keep talking about this air. You can see as you go from the 10th all the way to the 12th, you get this big high pressure that still goes all the way down towards Mexico. Now, this is going to be the polar temperatures. This isn't the Arctic air. The Arctic air is coming around the teens. So, right around the 17th and 18th, we get the next cold air coming all the way down from the 16th, the 17th and the 18th but you also can see that the arctic air comes all the way down and the high pressure does build all the way towards the south so we still have the arctic air coming down by the time it comes all the way to the south it will be polar temperatures not arctic temperatures but the wind chills are going to be pretty bad on that push a big high pressure but to be thorough let's talk about these temperatures so as this system forms up on tuesday and wednesday going all the way towards ohio valley on thursday it does have some warm temperatures around the center and it is going to be some snowfall on the wraparound not a lot but there is going to be another kicker that's going to form up right behind that right in the center of the u.s and that will be hitting some freezing temperatures as you go from the 10th through the 12th with these cold temperatures coming down from the 11th going all the way down to the south frozen temperatures in the deep south just for a moment as it transfers over towards the southeast for the 12th but the big temperatures the arctic air is going to come shoving through all the way from the 15th through the 16th and come all the way down on the 17th bringing 20s to the panhandle of texas teens negative temperatures all for that purple all for the upper midwest for the 17th and then for the 18th, it's going to stretch a little bit further into the U.S., but not go far to the south. You see how it raises right back up and the temperatures are northern. That's usually where your temperatures will lie is the northern half of the U.S. Because you can see with the wind chill index, it's going to feel even colder. So as that system goes from Texas Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday going to the Ohio Valley, you get some very cold temperatures, especially on the wraparound as these wind chills move on through. Then when you go from the 10th all the way down towards Texas, all the way to the 10th, you're going to feel like teen temperatures for the panhandle where everybody's feeling like some high 20s to 30s, 
but that won't be your temperatures. That's your feel like temperatures. But it will transfer over for the 11th and 12th. And this will bring wind chills of negative 15 and above for the upper Midwest. Ohio Valley feeling like you're in the 20s, even in the deep south for the 11th. You're going to feel like you're in the 20s to high 30s, maybe even low 30s. That's wind chills. But your temperatures aren't going to be that bad. But once you go to the 12th, it's going to go to the southeast and the northeast. So there will be a couple of days for this in the south as that pushes out for the 13th out to northeast. But the wind chills on the Arctic air when it comes in on the 15th and the 16th. This is bringing in negative wind chills all the way down to the 20s. And then as you go from the 17th, it goes a little bit deeper with the wind chills. So your temperatures won't be that bad, but your wind chills is what's going to make this a very rough experience as it goes to the 18th for the deepest of the cold chills all the way down to the whole south. All the way across Texas and the southeast, you're going to feel like you're in the 20s, even feel like high 30s in northern Mexico. That's wind chills. As it goes to the 19th, a little bit deeper and out through the northeast. Not really going too long, too far to the south. But we do have this Arctic air that is pushing through, especially for the western side of the U.S. as well as the upper Midwest. This is going to last all the way to the 17th and 18th. Very cold wind chills passing through, so be warned of this. All the way to the 18th so far is the coldest. Now, as you look at the next snowstorm update, according to the Euro and the GFS, you can see we still have that cold pocket as we go Tuesday and Wednesday, getting that severe weather. Chances for tornadoes, guys, as this goes all the way to Thursday. This is covering northern Missouri, central to eastern Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, and central to northern Wisconsin for this snowfall that's coming down. This is according to the Euro, it's seen a lot more snowfall than what National Weather Service is seeing. Then as it goes out through Thursday, it is bringing some snowfall towards the New England states. Now this is going to be accompanied by a little bit of freezing rain because we do have some warm temperatures aloft. But as the cold air gets a little bit deeper in the atmosphere, it will change over to snow. While you get the cold temperatures coming down, you can see the 540 line from the 10th all the way to the 12th, going all the way out to the northeast. Now when you get that nor'eastern and northeast, both models are still showing it's not much snow, but you can see on the wraparound it does get some snowfall for the northeast according to the Euro as that transitions. Now the GFS don't show that cold pocket with that little bit of snowfall, but National Weather Service does show something there. But as you go through Thursday, it does bring a lot of freezing rain and it brings a little bit of snowfall towards the upper Midwest, mostly Wisconsin, a little bit of Iowa, a little bit of northern Illinois and Michigan. While it brings a freezing rain towards the New England states, all the way from Thursday and Friday going out through the Northeast. While we get that kicker that builds up after that, and this is actually what brings your snowfall through the Ohio Valley for Friday from the 10th while you get these cold temperatures and Saturday through the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. Once again, rain for the I-95 corridor as that pushes out, but still gets a little bit of snow on a wraparound, not much. And that is what National Weather Service sees. So you can see the latest update with National Weather Service. As you go through Tuesday, it does bring some thunderstorms for Oklahoma. But it starts bringing a lot of mix. A lot of mix and a lot of chances of freezing rain with some snow. Now this blue is a chance for snow. The dark blue is, a, is where you're likely of your snowfall will be. As you go through Tuesday, it brings a lot of chances for freezing rain and mix. Then as you go for our severe weather, we start getting a snowfall for New Mexico as you go through Tuesday. As you go through Wednesday, it brings some mix, some snowfall. You get some rain for Washington and Oregon, and you get a lot of mix up there as well. While you get that little bit of snowfall for the New England states like I showed you. And as you go through Wednesday, it brings some mix and some snowfall across the central U.S. And as you go through Thursday, they have it as this. Only a little bit of transition will be into snowfall. A lot of this will likely be rainfall as it comes out and not being a lot of snow. When that next system comes through, there's a little kicker for Friday. It's not showing any snowfall on that yet neither. And as you go through Saturday, it's still showing I-95 corridor getting rain, intercoastal northeast getting the snowfall 
as you go out through Sunday. So, so far, National Weather Service isn't seeing a lot of this snowfall that some of these models are showing. But you can see the latest with the GFS, it brings one to two inches a little bit for the same area that National Weather Service is showing the chance for a little bit of snow and some mix. And it's only bringing a light amount of snow for Wisconsin, Northern Michigan getting the most, and a little bit of the New England states. And that's about what we see with National Weather Service. But that kicker after that, it shows it does bring some snowfall Again, towards the intercoastal northeast and some towards the central U.S. and upper Ohio Valley. So that's still yet to be determined. National Weather Service don't see that yet. And this is literally four or five days away. So I will update you. But GFS does see the freezing rain will start adding up, especially for the New England states. It could be an ice storm over there for you. Matter of fact, for today, they have a lot of mixed precipitation and a lot of chances for freezing rain. For tomorrow, a transition still got a chance for freezing rain and the mixed precipitation when we started getting our severe weather chances for flooding. Then as you go into the next day, it's another day of chances for freezing rain. So there's a lot of freezing rain potential coming with this according to National Weather Service. Now the Euro is showing it's just gonna be a little bit of snowfall, maybe one to two inches somewhere, some novelty flakes, but it could start adding up anywhere from two to four inches for Northern Missouri, Iowa, Southeastern Minnesota, and getting into major snowfall for Wisconsin going into Michigan and Canada. Well, you get a little bit for the New England states and that little kicker only brings a little bit for the Ohio Valley, but it adds up more for the Northeast. So we'll know more when we get closer. This is literally five to seven days away. But the Ural's not picking up any freezing rain for the next seven days. And National Weather Service has seen a lot of chances for freezing rain to add up. Plus some weather news updates. Turkey had that big earthquake yesterday, a big 7.8 magnitude, and it was catastrophic. <laughs> But now it is catastrophic, guys. Over 1,500 lives were lost. İnsanlar yardım bekliyor. 112'ye ulaşılmıyor. Buradaki halk elini uzatabildiğine yardım etmeye çalışıyor. Lütfen yardım gör denir. But they are still looking for people and they are still finding people guys. Abla durumunuz iyi mi? Usta. Arkada kardeşi var en arkada. Kardeşi ses geliyor mu ondan? Tamam tamam tamam. Abi dur abi. Plus the train derailment in Ohio has gotten worse. So now they want people that's within a mile of this crash to evacuate. The toxic chemicals are going into the atmosphere and it's getting very dangerous and they don't want it to explode and throw shrapnel in your area because it will explode within a mile radius. So remember, you can always watch the full length of those videos in the description down below. God bless all of you in Ohio. God bless all of you in Turkey. That is very devastating and I'm very sorry that you're going through that. And we still have our severe weather that has ramped up as we go from Tuesday. As this big whole surface load comes down, it brings all these storms in front of it for Tuesday and Wednesday. So they did put an outlook for Wednesday. Like I said yesterday, it was getting rough, but so far there was no severe weather outlook. They have updated it. So, so far they updated for Tuesday that you have a chance for tornadoes, guys. You have a big 2% all the way for Texas, all the way into Louisiana. It's affecting Houston, Austin, Corpus Christi, Pasadena, and Lafayette, Louisiana. And the threat has grown into Wednesday. You have a big 5% chance has grown to even more. This is for Memphis, Tennessee, New Orleans, Louisiana, Birmingham, Alabama, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Montgomery, Alabama. Now, I did see on the photographs that there is wind direction change with height, but it's all determined if it can tap into this lift, this cape. So as you go through Tuesday afternoon, it builds real strong for Texas and transfers for Wednesday over to Louisiana and Mississippi. A lot of strong lift that comes through and it could create tornadoes. I will update you as we get closer when I got a high resolution rapid refresh like I always do. I don't want to do this without a high resolution model.
but this also could be ramped up for Friday. So there is some lift that's going across Florida, southern Georgia, even a little bit of Alabama for Friday. And there is a lot of thunderstorms that's going to pass through all evening long, overnight for South Carolina and North Carolina. So they could ramp this up once again. Because you do see we get a lot of lightning strikes, a lot of thunderstorms as we go through Tuesday. It starts getting stronger overnight into Wednesday. Then it starts going for Arkansas, goes in Louisiana, goes into Mississippi as you go into late Wednesday. And then it carries over. It weakens down a little bit, but it does bring storms across southern Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, a little bit of southern Illinois. But it carries over for Thursday for the Panhandle of Florida, southern Alabama, and Friday it stretches right back out across Carolinas and Georgia. So it could be updated. I will keep you updated. What we do know so far, this first storm is starting to bring some damage and winds on the eastern side of it as you go through Wednesday. Then as it goes through Thursday, still showing the highest winds will be for the center of the U.S., Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, and the Ohio Valley, getting the strongest of the winds out of this first system that's passing through. Then as it goes out through the northeast, you see it kind of miles down. And most of it is going to add up for Thursday when it goes on this high pitch towards the upper Midwest. So you bring a lot of 40s, even getting into the 50s and pockets of 60s for Wyoming and Colorado. Even the higher elevations of New Mexico might get some 60 miles per hour wind gusts. As it goes towards Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, it is bringing 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts with it. And just for the next five and a half days, precipitation is really adding up for Washington, for Oregon, also right here for the central U.S. And as it goes through Friday, it is bringing that extra precipitation coming from the Panhandle of Florida to up through the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. But there is flash flooding that has grown. So for tomorrow, you do have the marginal and all the green, slight risk for flash flooding in the yellow, and then the next day it's just going to sit in the same area pretty much. So you definitely got to watch out for all these storms training in the same direction. So let's pick our winner for today. None your business. Congratulations. You are the winner of the weather station. Hey, weatherman plus. Hey, brother. Thank you so much for your support. I do appreciate you. God bless you. And thank you once again for everybody that's been following my channel. Remember, we are giving another one of these for tomorrow. None ya. <laughs> Make sure you contact me at this email, kidsgamingtoday at gmail. That way I can get your address and ship this out to you. And once again, thank you again for your support. So remember, we are doing this again for tomorrow. So if you want to be part of this weather station giveaway, you must be a subscriber. You must hit the like button and you must put the magic word in the comments. Now for tomorrow, I think we'll keep it the same word. We will see what tomorrow brings. First Thessalonians 5, 9 through 14. For God hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I will keep you updated on this Arctic air that is coming down to make sure we know exactly when and where this is coming and how bad it is going to get. So thank you so much for your time. Go out there and have a very Blessed day, every single one of you. Y'all are the greatest people I've ever met in my life. I'm very proud to say y'all my community. God bless you. And remember, above all things, all glory <laughs> does go to Yahweh, our Father, our God. And may he bless you and keep peace in your hearts every day of your life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great Monday, everybody.